Welcome to Risen. Here are 14 tips that will instantly improve your game. I bet you know one or two, but you probably won't know all of them. Number one, you can cheat death with any healing item. If in combat you get hit and your health bar goes to zero, but you still have white regaining left, and technically the pop up would come, do you want to use the wake stone? Ah, uh -uh. the moment your health drops to zero, you go into your menu and you can choose any kind of healing item you want to heal you up again. This works if the ogre smashes you with their booty, if he just backhand swings around and the cyclop completely destroys you, whatever, especially when you're fighting these big monsters. It can be so annoying that one swing can take you out of commission, but then you go bop bop, go click quick in the menu, heal item, and you're back kicking. You can do this over a healing shortcut as well. I like to go into the menu though, because you can choose how many heal items do you want to use? One or two? Do I want to use a stamina potion as well or not? So there's just more options given to you. Keep in mind, this does not work when you fall from the sky from a dragon or a griffin, for example, smash to the ground, then you can't use a potion to cheat death and help you. Number two, you can throw your teammates for more loot. Often there's inaccessible territory now, sometimes your mages will levitate up if they do actually have levitate. In this case, no one wanted to do anything. So I just grabbed my main pawn and I threw him to the chest and then told him, go loot it. Works absolutely fantastic in many situations throughout the game. Number three, you have seen the golden trophy beetles probably. They are strewn throughout the world, stuck to trees, on the ground, sitting in bushes. They hire your total weight capacity. My number one tip for farming these or getting more of them is running around at night because they have a distinctive golden glow. I mean, if you see any glow at night, it's either a goblin with a torch, which is free XP and DCP, or it will be a golden trophy beetle. Throughout my journey right now, I'm level 20. I've found 18 golden trophy beetles already. That is 18 times 0.15 weight increase on your main char. That is not to be underestimated. Remember what I told you about throwing your mates to get more loot? You can also throw your mates to avoid fall damage. Mm -hmm. So if you would jump down a cliff and you would usually die, well, take your mate, throw him down the cliff, preferable have him bounce off the wall so he doesn't take the full fall damage, and then you can just jump down into their arms. Yes, it sounds absolutely crazy, but it works that simple. They're gonna be just catching you and on you go with your journey. No fall damage for you. How will your pawn gets healed anyways? Number five, don't overthink your vocation because you can swap it so incredibly early. Not only can you swap it incredibly early, at the first in you are, boom, you can swap to whatever vocation you feel like of the starter vocations. You can find the advanced vocations throughout the game. You will want to swap vocations in the long run because what you have is augment slots. These augment slots are mix and match. That means I can take two thief augments, two warrior augments and two sorcerer augments if I feel like it. Therefore, in the long run, you will probably want to have leveled up every single vocation anyways to kind of choose the perfect augments you would like to have for your character. Number six, combine your food stuff. It will spoil. If you put your food stuff into the storage, it won't spoil anymore. It is good forever. But if you carry your food stuff around with you and if you rest, it actually does spoil in your inventory. And that can be quite annoying. If you have some very valuable aged beast meat that you can use for camping, and we'll get to camping in a second, and that is suddenly spoiled, pain. So might want to keep these in the storage. And when you then go on an adventure, pull the aged meat out again to have it as fresh as it can be. Which brings us to seven, rest more, camp more. One important thing to understand is your camping set does not deplete. I thought that in the beginning. So I was like, oh, I can't camp here. No, 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 no. No, your camping set is the infinite. Whenever you see a campfire, you might as well camp and get yourself one of these buffs because it makes you stronger, more agile, better regeneration, everything. HB's made, by the way. And these campfires are literally everywhere throughout the world, especially since your health after a few encounter won't go full full again because you took too much damage. And therefore you constantly run around with only 50%, 20%, 30% HP. Rest straight away, get back up, you're good. Only problem here might be time-sensitive quests. So have an eye out for that, that when you're on a time-sensitive quest, 
you hold on to that resting a little bit. Number eight, this one is my favorite, upgrade for better weight. What does that mean? Well, the first upgrade on every piece of gear is only a monetary upgrade, but every single upgrade on a piece of gear does reduce the weight of the piece of gear. So if I'm wearing a heavy half plate bandit armor, which I'm actually doing, uh, that comes in the beginning as a 265 weight. It's kind of annoying. And now as I have it three times upgraded, it's down to a 245, 233, vastly lower than before. Same goes for the weapon, your legs, your helmet, everything. Even if you only get the first upgrade on everything, you might as well save another 0.5 kilograms of weight. That's just too good to pass up on. And especially it's just 200 coins or 300 coins for the first upgrade. That one you want to do on every single new item you get at least. Number nine, as we talk about crafting, crafting can happen from the storage. So don't feel bad about just putting everything into your storage. All the crafting materials, goblin horns, minotaur stuff, teeth, ogre, whatever, splinters, blah, anything. Just jam your storage full within. And here's a little bonus. If your hired pawns have stuff in their inventory and they get disbanded, you kick them out. All the stuff in their inventory moves automatically to your storage. Do not worry using them as pack mules. Stuff them full of things as well that you can run around as light as possible because it always lands in your storage. Number 10, rift gates throughout the world. You want to activate all of them. Especially there is not normal rift gates that instead of popping up a rift stone, there will be a special pawn coming out. And that pawn can be up to five levels higher. I think if I was 14, I found a 19 one. At 20, I get a 25. And these pawns can be hired for free. It gives you instantly a supercharged, super leveled pawn to have an easier, smoother journey. 11, you can trade in your seeker tokens at the Vocation Guild Master in the main city. If you trade in these seeker tokens, they will yield rewards. Yes. And the first three rewards are actually worth it. So if you could procure 15 seeker tokens relatively fast, that is good. 30 would be nice for a pair of daggers. But to be fair, the first 15 is where it's worth in the beginning because the third ring is quite amazing, boosting all your stats by some. Afterwards, it will probably get more tedious to pick up everything to 30. Number 12, look at your pawn quests. Yes, the pawn quests give insane rewards, mostly wake stone shards. And if you find pawns with these quests, or if you have to choose between two pawns, always choose the one with the quest. When I've gotten 10,000 gold just for killing a Cyclops, because someone really wanted me to hire his pawn, it is these pawn quests you're actually setting yourself. And if there's rewards to it, like the 10,000 gold, you have to put that down yourself too for your own pawn to have people hire your pawn more lightly. But you want to also hire pawns that do actually have pawn quests more lightly. I think I've gotten <laughs> four full wake stones due to pawn quests and another 30,000 gold so far. It's not to be underestimated. Number 13, fairy stones are used for fast traveling, but they're a limited commodity. Don't waste them. I have so far on my journey to level 20 found four to five fairy stones. And to make it a little bit easier for you, I'm going to give you three locations where I have found the fairy stone. I won't tell you where exactly they are, where I found them. Just give you the map markers here that you can find them yourself. They really help when you travel out quite far to then go all the way back. Keep in mind that I would really discover all the map around there to then make it worth it to jump back. Not that you're the whole time back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. If you know more fairy stone locations, drop them in the comments below. Number 14, and this is a personal fun one of me. Listen to your sense of adventure. You hear a griffin crying near you. Try to make it up that mountain. You might find a griffin. You see a tiny trail that leads up the mountain. Well, there might be a secret boss uh, hidden up in there. That's a gigantic machine boss where you have to hit the machine parts and you suddenly get magical talismans and other shenanigans. Do give into it. This is your adventure, this is your journey, and they really want you to discover every nook and cranny because there is actually something in every nook and cranny. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the tips and tricks. There's more to come for Dragon's Dogma. Also, if you haven't started yet, choose your vocation or make yourself a Gandalf main pawn as I did, who has been aiding me beyond good so far. Enjoy.